Thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me. I saw a tweet of yours the other day, which may be the most frightening thing you can hear sometimes. <laughs> but he said, um, I'll quote it for you. I'm on Spotify UK's Sad Songs playlist, which couldn't make me happier. <laughs> and I know that's funny, and that, that's a funny thing Ta-da. to say. But, but do you get some joy out of singing sad songs? Uh, I, yeah, I don't feel like they're sad at all. Uh, at all. I, I just feel like they're just kind of mm, somewhere in the middle. What do you mean? Um, I don't feel uh, I don't feel sad when I'm playing them. Um, well, that's a sad song, the one we just heard. I guess, eh? But I feel like the music isn't sad. Uh, and I feel like somewhere the lyrics and the music, uh, like they're not really separate. Like I think if I wrote you a letter with those lyrics, maybe I'd be like pretty sad. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but when do they become not sad? I, the whole time. Like I, when I wrote that one, because the joy of like writing a song, <laughs> you know, or like just, because that one came to me kind of like in one shot, which was really fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're just kind of writing it down. You're not really thinking about it. And uh, maybe after, if you, yeah, if you read it over a bunch of times and try and figure out what it means, you might get a little sad. But I feel like there's like a release that that isn't sad. Yeah. But that release can can dissipate. You know, I, I love what a lot of people don't who don't tour don't know. And when they go to see you in concert, they just see you that night. They see you mm-hmm. that Thursday night. Uh, Alan Doyle from Great Big C told me this great kind of thing he says to himself that no no matter if they're on their, you know, the 30th day in a row, to the people in the audience, it's the only night they'll ever see them. Yeah, totally. But I know that, you know, when you're 30 days into this thing or three years into singing the same songs, that feeling, that joy can start to go away. And I know you got a little bored or a little uninterested with your older material. Yeah, well, I kind of... Um... It was more. It, it's kind of the opposite. Uh, I'm because I agree with with uh, with Great Big C uh, for sure. That's but, the tagline of the show, by the way. <laughs> I agree with. Got to agree with Great Big C. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm so glad I named it. Mm-hmm. I get a prize. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, is that the older songs were more uh, needed more emotion, and I always feel the song. Um, I want to make sure I feel the song when I play it live, entirely, f- and fully. So, I'm not like. I was like, I'll just kind of phone it in. I have to like feel it. And that's what was hard about these older songs is that some of them, I didn't feel the emotion anymore. Like mm-hmm. I didn't, uh, not that the song didn't work, but I was like not meeting the song. Like the song had its own, it was just how I felt when I was like 23 or something. Right. You yeah. know, and then I was like, and the song was a bit narrow. Like I, it's like there's a doorway into the song. And if you feel that way, you can get in. And if you don't feel that way, like you don't fit through the door. And so I kind of was like having to cut songs from my set list where I was like, I don't know if I can play this and be present and like be a, be in the song so that people will recognize the song or get what they need from it. And these new songs, you know, always the new songs are the best ones. Well, know, but, but yeah, but I was going to say because y- that 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 kind of problem can inspire n- new music. Where where were you when you were making this new record? Uh, basically, I I was touring a bunch and then uh, I was like, I'm not writing because I'm playing. I'm not writing. Uh, I was trying to like emotionally get into my set. And so I wasn't like being the, the me of the moment, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. No, but for I writing, know, I, I kind of... I'm trying to figure out what you mean here. Well, I kind of was like, for me, like playing at the time, like I I was like kind of trying to remember who I was to play the songs. Right, you know? okay, okay. And so it was like, I wasn't really caught up with, it's kind of pretentious, but anyway, I was like, what, I wasn't really being, I wasn't caught up quite with where I was at. And so I kind of took... Uh, a few months off and uh, just kind of like stayed in my apartment and played piano mm-hmm. <laughs> for, for for a good chunk and then just like saw what kind of came out and it was like a bit more, you know, songs that were the, where the door was a bit more open where but, like when I played them I was, I could feel different m- emotions and play the song. But you weren't just staying in your house and playing piano. You were also going out and you played some covers, is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. You're playing Ray Charles, Tom Waits, Bob Dylan, Kendrick Lamar. What were you getting out of playing other people's songs that you weren't getting out of playing your own? Well, you don't think about anything other than playing music when you're playing a cover, right? You're just like, even like, you know, joking around with a C-Spot Run cover. It's like, well, like, let's see, like, let's see how it works. Let's see how, like, are all the tools, like, here? Like, oh, there's a hammer. Okay, let's go get that hook, you know, or whatever. And, uh, yeah, and then you just kind of figure out what feels right. It has to feel good. And ultimately, that's all you're chasing. And when you're working on your own song, sometimes you, you forget that it's supposed to feel like something sometimes you you're like it's got to be true and it's got to be I've got to hit this and I've got to hit that but when you're doing a cover you just kind of like let the song talk to you and just see what it has to say and that's that's really fun and 
And does, does that does that help you write new music? Oh man, yeah. I for me, like listening to a song and knowing it really well, that's one thing. But if you learn all the lyrics and uh, and I mean like learn them, like they're you have to play it for like a few hours and then like sleep and then it get really deep in your subconscious mm-hmm. and then when you play it you are like you can kind of connect with the song in a real way yeah you can't think about it anymore yeah you can't think about what the words are what the chords are yeah, yeah. it's got to be it, you got then you can go to the next place and mm-hmm. then what happens is it's kind of i think tom waits says uh you compose what you uh, you excrete what you eat or something so you know <laughs> and uh of course oh, yeah right yeah something like that yeah, and like, it's kind of that like all of a sudden and I've seen it with like friends of mine who are musicians. Like they go do some covers, and then I'm like, "Oh, there's that little riff that like is in a new key, different tempo, and you don't even know you're doing it." I don't say anything, but I'm like, "You learned. You ate something really good mm-hmm. last week, and well, now it's in your song." Well, Stephen Van Zandt from Bruce Springsteen's band, uh, Little Stephen, he, he his whole thing. He gets a bit grumpy about it, but his whole thing is that in the early days of the E Street Band, they got up and they played covers every single night for every night for years. Yeah. And then when it came time to write their songs, they knew how to do it. They well, they, they understood that CCR Green's. Uh, I don't know why I was about to explain what CCR was. Green Green's Clearwater Water <laughs> Revival. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're allowed to say CCR without saying. Okay. Green's okay. Clear cool. Water Revival. But I mean, they were uh, a bar band like in the south for like I think I don't know like three or four years I may be extending that but without any of their own songs so they knew what worked every night what got people crazy and if you listen to their songs it's like guitar, bass, drums, vocal nothing else and it's insane like it's killer everything is killer and you know same thing with the Beatles like it's Mm. like all these people that like figured out you know who because also when you're playing a cover it's also you're discovering what connects with you. You know, you're not playing any cover. You're playing the ones that, like, get you, and you, you kind of want to find out why. And uh, you kind of discover who you are by, like, what touches you, you know? What, what, what song that you covered um, did you learn the most from, had, had the most impact on you? I mean, it's... I wish it was like that. It's kind of like all of them. Like, I, I was... I got really uh, in deep with, like, playing this Kendrick song. Kendrick Lamar. Uh, yeah. I, and, yeah, he's just amazing. His yeah. lyrics are fantastic, mm-hmm. and, like, his sense of, his sense of rhythm is, like... I guess I, I should say flow, is mm-hmm. like, he's amazing. It's, and, it's unparalleled, yeah. Yeah, and so it's just kind of like, okay, let's see what's going on here. And like, uh, and then you just kind of, it just kind of subconsciously works on, you know, how maybe you're going to phrase something in the future. Yeah. Um, also, this is a, this Bruce Springsteen song that um, a friend of mine taught me, Dry Lightning, off of Ghost of Tom Joad. I didn't oh, even, yeah, I don't even know that record. Yeah, well, yeah. neither did I. And he's like, you don't know this one. You're going to love it. Um and uh, his name's Gregory Allen Isakoff, mm-hmm. going on tour. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah, incredible singer. Yeah, and so that's correct. Mm-hmm. That is so true. And uh, yeah, and that that song, that's that's maybe a song that uh, I think that that's the one that I was playing on tour with him. And then when I got back, I wrote Vancouver Time. And I I'm, I didn't try and see if the melody was aped or anything. I just, I didn't want to think about it. I don't think it did. But uh, it's that one really helped me out too. It just kind of like goes, you know, that song, mm-hmm. like the lyrics. Um, yeah, if I could remember any of them right now. <laughs> Watch the ring on the stove turn red, hypno- hypnotized by a cup of coffee, uh, put on my boots and made the bed, you know? It's like, come on, you're, you're there. You, you can't touch that. Oh, man. Uh, the album artwork for, for Twin Solitude, if you're just tuning in, by the way, I'm speaking with Lee Folabeck, the album artwork for this new record, Twin Solitude, is kind of blue and, and purple, which is my way of leading up to this next question, which I feel very strange asking, but... It's something that I'm so curious about, but I've never experienced in my own life. Is it, is it true you recently discovered you have synesthesia? Yeah, but I mean, I don't, I don't have it um, to the level that I think it's cool enough. I have like a like a, a mild <laughs> form, but it's- synesthesia. I should say, if you don't know what it is, is you know when you hear music, or you, I'm sure I'm getting this wrong, but you hear music, you experience art, and you see colors, you see yeah. shapes, you see things yeah. that associate with with the music you listen. To. Yeah, well, for me, and this is what I I was reading about it. Um, is that you don't know you have it because you think that everybody hears it the same way. And mm-hmm. it's just been, especially on recording this record, where I would be, like, explaining what I wanted <laughs> and in terms of, like, like colors and, and, like... What do you mean? Give me an example. Well, like, uh, the song Elegy, I wanted the piano to be... Also, it becomes... I just wanted it to be, like, this golden, like, like kind of, like, fool's gold, like, kind of, like, wet rock kind of thing with, like, some gold on top. Do you know what I mean? And I just assume that everybody. Yeah, no, I, 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 I one hundred percent don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I'm always confused because I'm always like, I always like, well, we all have it, so it's not. Yeah, so it's like, it's like this golden shimmery thing, and uh, yeah, 
So I'm just, and that that was what I was trying to get at. Mm-hmm. And so the recording was like when it finally like sat in this kind of, kind of, but not really gold, kind of like like a dark, you know, like like kind of a, like an you know an old mm, old jewelry, how it's kind of like faded and like yeah. matte. Yeah, more that. And, and so, so, <laughs> so, so you know, like, no, but I don't like so. But I find it so fascinating. I have a friend of mine who he hears a. He sees a different color for every Beethoven symphony. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I find that, and the 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 girls that did um, strings on my record, uh, their name is Shargo. They live in Atlanta now. Mm-hmm. Um, we played one of their tracks not too long ago on, did the, you? on this show. Yeah, we cool. did. Cool. Yeah, amazing. Who did we have on? We had someone on. I forget who it was. We had someone on who used him. I think it was you. Oh yeah. Well, I put them on my record. It was you. We played we played your record and we talked about Shargo. It was oh you. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah, They're getting, right, yeah. like, right. known. Oh, yeah. it's just Some like... dude. <laughs> <laughs> Some jobber. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Some ham and egger oh, my we God. had on the program. Oh, I like that. Ham yeah. and egger. I got that from Mitch. That's good. Mm-hmm. A&W, I, I It's suppose. a wrestler. It's a term oh. for a wrestler who's not a well-known wrestler. Like, Ric Flair would go out and fight a ham and egger. Oh, I thought it was just sandwiches. Me too. I love breakfast sandwiches. We used to say jobber when we were kids. <laughs> so anyway, Shargo. Let's go back to Shargo. Yeah, sure. So... I, I said my friend, um, he he sees Beethoven symphonies in yeah. different colors, and Chargo the same way. Well, yeah, well the the violin. So it's Charlie and Margot, and then Charlie was. Uh, all of a sudden, we realized that we could just talk about color when we were like arranging the string parts. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then she was, and she asked me. She's basically the one that made me realize that, like, she's like, oh, you're like me. Nobody gets it. And she was like, tell me what color is jazz to you most of the time. And I was like, eh, brown. And she's like, I knew it. You know, and it's like, oh, so you guys have the same synesthesia? Not completely, but it's the same because what happens, and I thought that's why I thought, anyhow, it was like for jazz, not all of it, but like Miles Davis, like kind of blue, the modal stuff is one color. And you know what I mean? So then it's like really easy to listen to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of weird because it's not, it's that fascinating. Bad. Yeah, it's fascinating. But, yeah. So, but um, Sibelius, um, or the composer, the Finnish guy, uh, actually, mm-hmm. Pancakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I should point out, Leaf and I were talking about Pancakes, and I'm about to go to Thunder Bay. Pancakes in, in Finnish Pancakes in Thunder Bay, apparently, I think I need to do. You got to do it. All right. Um, get a sauna. But yeah, um, he's like maybe the composer that I connect with um, that visually the most. And so um, it's got this concerto in D minor that uh, I heard one time, and I was like, finally, like classical music that makes sense to me. It's all white. And like a little bit of blue the whole way through, so it's like I can hear all the notes properly, and uh, uh, and then I was like, I'm gonna look it up, and he had synesthesia too, <laughs> and, I, that, and I was like, that makes perfect sense to me because I like I don't like too many colors, otherwise like I, it gets confusing. You can't hear properly. It's kind of it's not that bad, you know. But it's like when I'm focused listening, yeah, it's like you just see in in your mind what's going on. Like visually, but it's like kind of weird. So this song you're about to play, uh, "All Night Sedans." Yeah. What What does this look like? It's well on the recording. It's different because um, it the bass and the bass drum have like this like bluish dark thing. <laughs> no, no, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you, hundred yeah, percent. And it, but it's also it, so it, bluish, bluish bass drums. Yeah, and like kind of dark, dark green, and uh, but the piano, uh, it's an A flat, and A flat is like a key that is like. Uh, it's hard to describe, but like A is like a really bright yellow, but A flat is like more of that um, tarnished. Yeah, actually, it's the same color as the Elegy song. That's why. All right, let's see if let's see if we <laughs> let's see if we see any of these things. And if you do, drop us a line. Q at cbc.ca. We want to know if you have synesthesia, if you see anything during this next song. Uh, thanks for a lot for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me.